remediation, biofabrication, biopolymers, fermentation, vaccines. It goes without saying that biotechnology has reached far and wide in the science world, but there's still a lot more that can be done. Many of the examples I just mentioned have been made possible by what we used to refer to as bad germs when we were children. My name is Zahra Ozir and I'm a third year biotechnology student from Quest International University. And I'm here to speak to you today about genetics, microorganisms, and all in all, genetically modified organisms, aka GMOs. One of the main crises our future faces is the eradication of several natural resources, which is currently being researched for sustainable solutions. Take for instance the burning of fossil fuels, which is running out and is leading to global warming. According to the Hadley Center, in recent decades, temperatures have risen sharply by 0.7 degrees Celsius due to the doubled atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide, above 400 parts per million as compared to 200 parts per million in prehistoric years. Even the large digital clock in Manhattan tells us that we only have seven years left before the effects of global warming are irreversible. So what are we to do about this? Addressing this issue takes the UN Sustainable Development Goal or SDG number 13 on climate action into consideration. Even the world famous Esther Richa Coli has a role to play in saving Mother Nature. It has been genetically modified by Gleiser et al. in 2019 to enzymatically convert the atmospheric carbon dioxide into a consumable nutrition source for itself. Although at present time it produces more carbon dioxide than it takes in. This, however, does not worry scientists as E. coli has proven to be a very user-friendly tool in biotechnology. Many believe with further research, we would be able to efficiently produce biofuels and optimize the production of insulin, enzymes, and several other necessary proteins. But fossil fuels aren't the only resource that is running out. BBC News has announced that a 2008 study suggested Southern Asia and Southern Africa could lose more than 10 to 30% of their staple crops, such as rice and maize, by 2030 due to climate change. And by 2050, we will need to increase food production by 50 to 100% in order to feed the growing population. Should these conditions persist, then the future of agricultural as well as the food and beverage industries looks rather bleak. Since the natural conditions are no longer normal, biotechnology has become a necessity in order to combat these conditions and adapt to a new normal. Genetically modified crops, with the help of bacteria such as Bacillus thuringiensis and Agrobacterium thumefaciens, has shown promise towards uh, resistance against high salinity, drought, and flooded conditions while also being able to incorporate improved nutrition as was seen with golden rice. Just earlier this year, scientists have been able to discover 12,000 new microbial species through metagenomic studies. Upon further research, who knows what kind of compatibilities and combinations would be possible? Let's say one of these species are capable of post-translational modification or PTM for short. Direct use of these species or genetic recombination of this trait into an already well-researched bacterial species could be used for mass production of eukaryotic proteins. For instance, antibodies for plasma therapy against various diseases. Bacteria, particularly E. coli, has already been considered for this role all on its own. This provides high proliferation rates as well as high yield production of antibodies a possible alternative to hybridoma technology. Unfortunately, the media and several others do not believe in the strengths and solutions that GMOs have to offer. It takes months to years in order to gain the necessary approval from governments and other bodies. However, it takes even longer for the general public to accept the use of GMO, without which many of our advancements cannot take flight. So I would like to encourage the scientific community to continue to spread awareness on such necessities in order for us to have a thriving and sustainable future. Thank you.